Welcome to HeartSpeak Podcast, episode 81, Embracing Mystery. Well, I hope you enjoyed going through the balsamic moon. I hope you saw how many roles you're actually maybe changing, the way your relationships are changing, the way in which the rules by which you've lived your life are changing. And as we enter this dark moon phase with the new moon, now on the 22nd here in New Mexico at least, and I think it's true for much of the world. So the first dark moon day will be on the 21st. And the second dark moon day, which is the day of the new moon, will be on the 22nd. And the third dark moon day is on the 23rd. So these are the three days you really want to pay attention to. And here we are heading towards that first dark moon day. With the new moon day is actually starting as I'm preparing this podcast or the new moon will be there. And what happens, why do we call it a dark moon is because we can't see the moon in the sky anymore. But this was the most powerful time for the feminine, for women. Many women will find that their periods were aligned to this dark moon time because for women especially, mystery is when they are most powerful. And for those men listening, this is your most powerful for your feminine, this diving deep into mystery. And what does mystery mean? Mystery means initiate. It comes from the word mystere. And I did quite a lot of study into looking at mystery. And it was when you were actually called a mystere where it was you are becoming an initiate. And an initiate meant going into places that were unknown. That's what it truly meant. You were stepping into this mystery, this unknown. And interestingly, when I was looking at this and studying it, it also came up with words like eyes closed, mouth shut. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So when we're studying mystery and embracing mystery, we're actually keeping our mouth shut and we're listening. And we're watching through our third eye rather than our physical eyes. And it's very interesting because when we think about our throat chakra, that always wants to ask questions, always wants to know more. Because if I have more knowledge, then I don't have to be scared of mystery. Tell me what it is. How can I see it? How can I know it? Maybe your mind is already racing there already. And that's because the mystery is not found in the mind. Remember your mind, I'll I'll use the brain if if I may. The brain can only know what has already been programmed into it. So when we try to find the answers or we try to enter mystery through our head, we will never do that. Because the brain is constantly trying to assess the information and align it to what is already known. Make sense? So when you're listening to someone, so commonly we are listening for what we already know and go, oh, well, I know that. Now that ties in, or I can put it in that box. I can define this because now I understand it from my point of view. Make sense? And the eyes do the same. You may know that actually when we see we don't see the whole picture. We see pieces of a picture and then we put our own interpretation onto what we physically are seeing with our eyes. And it's quite interesting where they have shown that if, for instance, um, you almost form a circle, but you don't quite with the, the, the image you're seeing, what the eyes will see is the complete circle. Or if you see a letter, but you don't actually see the whole letter, your eyes will say, oh, I know that, that's a G. But you're actually not showing that. In other words, if you just saw certain dots that make up the letter G, our eyes make up the complete letter G, if that makes sense to you. I hope it does. So our eyes uh, and even our, our way of listening and I'm not suggesting we're not going to listen, but we're going to listen with our hearts and not with our ears. <laughs> when we listen with our ears, we are constantly assessing the information that's coming in and aligning it to what we already know. 
We do the same with our eyes. And our throat chakra is connected to our ears, not to our eyes so much, but our throat chakra is literally, as we're listening to someone, as you're listening to me, <laughs> please listen with your heart, not your ears, but if you're listening to me, you're actually already aligning to something you already know. And, and we call this also pre prejudice, prejudgment. And that's why when we meet someone, we are already assessing how they dress, what is their gender, what is their culture, you know, what is their color, etc. We're literally trying to assess somebody or something so they, we can feel safe, basically. If I can define you, then I know who you are. I can put you in a box. Whew, that's good, all great. But if you are mystery, I'm really challenged by you. And years ago, my husband and I and, and a group of wonderful friends traveled down through the south of France because this is where Mary Magdalene was said to have spent a lot of time during her life on earth. And we went to all the places where they said, oh, yes, Mary Magdalene was here, a cave, a church, a place that she could have been. And each time, in all honesty, we never really found her. Now, you might say, if you've been to the same area, oh, you weren't looking in the right places, or you didn't, you didn't hear her, or she was here. But I met her. I met her, but not in the physical form or the historical form in which we were being guided to, to think that this is where she had lived. In other words, there was a, a skull in St. Baum that said, oh, this is her skull. Well, how do you know it was her skull? Well, someone in, in 600 or 700 AD wrote, this is her skull. Do you know how many years there are between zero and 700 years to say, yeah, this is definitely her skull? And then there was another, there's a beautiful cave there in St. Baum. And, and again, they said, oh, yes, yeah, she lived here as a penitent sinner for 40 years. How do you know that? Was it written on the wall? I was here, MM. <laughs> I lived here for 40 years. No, it wasn't. But did I meet her? Absolutely. I met her in the forest that exists, actually, beneath the cave and above the church. And I, as, a, as an intuitive, as I'm climbing up through this amazing forest there, which is an alchemical, it's, it's an alchemical energy, the trees in this forest don't exist in that part of France. So someone planted this in a way to make it such a mysterious forest. And as I'm climbing up, my intuition, and this is how it usually works for me, I don't have a plan. I just go, okay, what am I going to ask? And what I asked was, who will share with me about Mary Magdalene in this area? And immediately my inner vision saw this huge druid woman. And I knew that the druids had been fairly big in that area. Well, she was a big lady. <clears throat> and I asked her, first of all, she said, what are you doing in my forest? And I went, oh, sorry, I should have asked you. I didn't know that, that you were the guardian. Please may I enter your forest. And yes. She said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and once we'd made this uh, connection, she, I said, did Mary Magdalene come through here? And she just said, of course she did, <laughs> which is often the answer I get. <laughs> like, that was a stupid question. And then the second part was, I said, well, where was she coming from or why was she here? She said, well, she, she was a Druid. And of course, if you understand those times, the Druids were very much around the same time as Mary Magdalene of Jesus, uh, Yeshua or Jesus. And they understood these messages. And also, they were very much connected to the Essenes, which we believe Mary Magdalene was an Essene. And she said, well, she had passed through here. Of course, she had passed to, through here. And she said, but we connected to her wherever she was in the world, because we know how to do that through the roots of these trees. We know how to connect. And that's something we're going to do at the end of this podcast. We're going to do a meditation of this. And I felt that when I met this wonderful Druid lady, I was being told, <laughs> don't be so silly. We don't need to meet physically to know that someone exists. <laughs> well, 
okay, that was just a silly question. <laughs> but this is the same idea that we have now. And even in lockdown, we're all connecting to each other, connecting to our hearts. We're connecting through the memories of someone we know. We're connecting beautifully through the moon. This is why we're doing this work, where we all look at the moon or when we focus on this dark moon, we're connecting. And we're really asking ourselves, well, what's connecting? What am I connecting to? What am I aware of? And you're aware of someone's presence. You may be aware of something that you literally see. I know I'm talking to a number of you who are uh, psychic and intuitive. And when I'm talking with someone uh, on a soul reading, I, I don't use Skype or I don't use the camera because I can actually see this person I'm talking to much better without physically seeing them. Their, their presence is much clearer to me when I'm not trying to look at a, a human face. Not that they don't have beautiful human faces, but there's that, that whole emotion that wants me to see a certain thing. But when I don't see you, I can pick up on your energy much better. And you are able to do the same thing. I know many of you are already doing this, but it really doesn't matter what we would say on which plane of existence that we're living on. We all exist now. And all I will say, just to finish that off, that when I'm working with uh, spirit beings, people who have passed over, many a time they will reach me not in the form that they have left. In other words, if they died when they were in their 80s, they're no longer in their 80s. We take on a form that was our most optimal form, our most wonderful form. And so I'm often interested when I meet someone uh, in spirit, what form are you taking on? How did, what's that form you want to see yourself in? And there was someone I was working with whose uh, son died. He was only 10 years old. And yet this boy always turned up as a man. He always turned up as a 34-year-old man. It's like, hello, you're supposed to be a child. And he said, oh, come on, I'm not a child. Now, I've also got to say that having worked with spirit, and I'm just moving here into mystery again, Remember that spirit guides or spirit angels will appear to us or ETs will appear to us in a format that we can accept. And so just because they are in spirit, please don't see them with two eyes and nose and a mouth. Recognize them as energy. Sometimes they may even appear in a very strange energy. And recognizing that whatever you see is right, and I've spoken about this before, but when we're calling on spirit to be with us, Yes, it's a feeling. It's the same feeling I'm having towards you as I'm speaking with you. It's the same feeling you have towards a loved one. Go with your feeling. Listen with your heart, not with your head. And if your head gets in the way of trying to define someone, whether they are here physically or whether they're in spirit world, we've already shut off the mystery. I hope this is making sense to you. So being open, we, I say, you know, open your heart, open your mind, be in your innocence, be in your curiosity. These are words that I use a lot. But the more you can stay in your curiosity, the more you can stay in your unknown, the mystery of this, the more focus you'll have of being able to see and experience the spirit world, whatever we call that. And I'm saying it in that way. I think that having been always intuitive, I, I don't, the, the only word we really had was spirit world. It doesn't make you more spiritual. We're talking about something that is not so called in the physical world. But when I look at you, you're also not physical. You are spirit, you're energy. And, and you know, we, I hear people say, well, we're all energy. Do we even know what that means? I mean, in the sense of, yes, if you've done energy training, you'll say, oh, yes, I know we're all energy but we still think that this wall, I can't walk through this wall, or that we see people in their more physical format. I want you to use what I call soft eyes. This is your third eye. Let your eyes dim. Don't focus. When I was, when I was teaching how to fire, you know, see an aura, people would be staring. I can't see that aura. <laughs> Stop staring. Sometimes it's just out the corner of your eyes. Sometimes, it's in my inner eyes. And I know that when I work with people, you know, with big groups and I'm teaching intuition, I'll probably get about oh, 50 or 60% of people who will have a feeling. 
50 percent maybe the same people 50 50 50 or 60 percent of people will see something some will get a words less numbers will get words and some people will just know just a sense of i know it all and you can also get taste and smell and and smell sometimes you'll say wow i taste I taste something in my mouth or, or I smell roses. Whatever it is, trust yourself. Oh, I, feel, I feel that, you know, someone says, well, how do you see something? It's almost like I get an impression. I just get a knowing. And, I, and that's often an impression both of a feeling as well as of seeing. And then when I ask that knowingness, what do you want to tell me? Then I get words. I'd love to hear how all of you intuit or feel something. If I'm walking in a forest and I'm asking, can I see the fairies or this druid lady? Then what I'll do is I'll often see something out the corner of my eyes shaking, but often again, I'll get this instant impression. And I'm sharing all this this time because this is about us going into mystery. This is not just about seeing angels or fairies or druid ladies. This is about trusting the intuition that you already have. This is not new, my friends. You know how to do this. And that's what I really wanted to emphasize today. You know how to do mystery. You've been doing it a long time. but our brain takes over and says, well, well, no, I, I know this. No, you didn't. Initially, you didn't know it. And now you know it. Um, how can I say you're in a dream and you didn't know how to start that dream, but you also didn't know that you didn't know what was in that dream. I'm sure you've had dreams where you're like, that's a bit weird. But when you wake up, you sometimes we just dismiss the weirdness or we make the weird more fit into what we already know. Stay with the weird, be weird, be unique, be different, be unusual. Write it down. Yes, because it does help, but be careful not to write it down in words that you think, well, I, I've got to understand this. And many a time I'll wake up and think, wow, I had a big dream there, but I can't remember it because actually I can't put it into words. And it's only over time that everything gets downloaded into my brain, but through almost an awareness of something that maybe two or three months ago, I wouldn't even have started to be able to understand. Does that make sense? Ah, I seem to be saying that a lot today. Does it make sense? It, it's interesting. I think I was sharing with you just how that's been a theme over the last few months, maybe because of my moon in Aquarius of people saying, I really don't understand or even they will understand or I will understand. Well, I've come to the conclusion, no, you possibly will never understand because I'm talking on a frequency that may not be your frequency. And again, I know that's not true of you that are listening to me, but if our brain tries to make sense of it, then we've probably already limited it. So again, listening with our heart, and reminding yourselves of times in your life where you have stepped into mystery without your brain being aware. I spoke about this before, but what moments of, of ahas did you step and you went, well, I'm just going to do this. I talked about how I came to America with one of those feelings. I left my general practice job with one of those feelings. I've known things even though it hasn't made sense. And if you can align to how you know, or whether you know when your intuition is working, that's a really good thing to do now. So here would be mine. When I get an intuitive hit, it's so clear to me and so definite, I don't ask for help. But when I have an inch when I hear something and I find myself saying yes and then afterwards feel cold shivers or I must get out of this or I feel tired it's pretty clear that I need to leave that thing and that is not in alignment with me so once again if you could just be thinking when do I know that I'm following my intuition and intuition is linked to mystery all right you're following your heart 
when am I following my heart? When am I entering mystery? And when am I not? And being able to discern the difference is really good. So some people talk about uh, happy tears. When I know I'm following intuition, I get happy tears or my hair stands on end, or I get the shivers or goosebumps, all right? They're all signs of, yes, this is the right thing to do. I wonder what you get, maybe happy butterflies in the stomach. Whatever it is, let it be right for you, all right? Don't follow my suggestions, follow yours. You've already done this, you already know. And then, probably more importantly, when is it that you're not following it? When, what happens to you when, when you say yes, when you should say no, or you shouldn't get married when you, even though you're thinking you will? When do you know something's not right? Okay, and again, it might be tiredness, coldness, irritation. Why did this person have to ask me this? I wouldn't have been in this situation otherwise. When is it you know it isn't right for you? All right, so really, checking those things out, reminding yourself of when you've done it in the past, yeah, yeah, that was the right decision, and recognize that synchronicities are part not of, don't get lost in them, what can I say? Synchronicities are telling us that we're on the right path, all right? But don't get lost in the synchronicity, that's called phenomena. So just be careful we don't get caught in the phenomena. Oh, I, I saw a bird and it was red. Yeah, because it's telling you you're on the right path. Yeah, but what's a red bird mean? Maybe nothing. You're on the right path. And it's the same as people seeing 11, 11, 22, 22, 33, 333. It means something to you. I'm not even going to say what it means in terms of it might be around your birth date. It might be around your numerology. It might just be time to do something. But don't get lost in seeing it. Wow, I saw it 10 times today. Do something. <laughs> Energy. What shall I do? Just tell yourself you're in the right space at the right time. Follow that message. Keep going in the direction you're going. It's like having green lights. All right, so it's like, wow, all the lights were green. Great, keep going. But if you come up a lot of, across a lot of red lights, maybe it's telling you something different. And maybe just telling you to slow down. So listening to our intuition is an essential part of embracing mystery. Recognizing our brain, our throat chakra will go crazy. So if you find yourself asking questions all the time or doubting it, calm down. And listen back to your heart. When have I trusted this? What are the signs when I know I'm following it? And sometimes even just listening to the birds or listening to something around you that aligns you to nature. And we're doing this by following the, the mystery of the moon. The moon is taking us through that. And we're going to follow that mystery down into the earth. Because this is the journey of saying, I am willing to be in the unknown because the unknown is the richest source of creative activity, all right? So mystery is expanding us. When we follow our heart, it's not uncommon for us to get anxious because literally our heart is, is already there. We're, if we're excited by something or we're, wow, I'm gonna do that, we may experience also some anxiety. As I mentioned last time, a part of us going, no way! But the anxiety is also about that expansion of consciousness. And it's the gap between us already being there and the thought of doing it. So remember, anxiety is also the opposite of that is excitement. And do you just need to calm your little brain down and say, it's going to be okay. We're, we're, we're on this. <laughs> All right. So that was my wanting to share with mystery. Be mindful of those who are scared of mystery. They may try to persuade you not to follow that. I'm sure you've all experienced this in the past. I'm sure you've all experienced frustration at trying to share what you're seeing and someone saying, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm sure... <clears throat> I'm sure some of you have also come across some fear in people. Occasionally, someone tells me about 
a teacher they've had where, I, if I may be honest, they've actually outgrown the teacher. But the teacher is scared the fact they've outgrown them. And so they say, well, oh, be careful, be careful. Or maybe they even put down what you've said. I wonder if any of you have had that experience. And that's okay. It's in some ways saying, thank you very much for being my teacher. I'm now going on my own path. And if someone is limiting your teaching, you know, you're sharing your mystery, then bless them because they're actually showing you how different you are rather than how same you are. There we go. How does that sound? So this final part is us. I'm going to give you, a, uh, give you, but work with you in a meditation. And we're entering into this dark moon. Now, can I just remind you of what you need to do on that first day? That first day of the dark moon at sunset, or as it's got dark, I should say, you want to, if you can, get out into nature, stand on something that isn't concrete, if possible, something that has earth underneath it. Again, if you've only got concrete, that's okay. If you're living in a high rise and you have to do this inside your building, that's okay. Everything's okay. But if you are in a place where it is not natural underneath your feet, then take your imagination into a place where you like going where it is natural. It's the best way of doing it. All right. Between the balsamic moon and now, you've been gathering up. What am I celebrating? What am I celebrating about myself in this last month? It might just be small things. It might be something you've done physically, practically, finished something that you've been waiting to finish. That's probably me. Um, but I'm watching that around my home with my husband as well. Maybe you've cleared cupboards. Maybe you've, well, I planted some plants yesterday, which I wanted to do, and I painted a gate. <laughs> so all of these things are getting done. And then the second piece is what part of me did I learn or did I meet this, this month? And again, it doesn't have to be a positive, if you want to call it that way. Maybe I met the part of me that gives my power away. Maybe I met my angry self, all of these I'm, I love having. So again, bringing them into your heart on this, as we're doing the ceremony, you're going to be reading out, what am I celebrating? And then when you come to the, what parts of me have I met, put your hands on your heart and say, I've met my angry self. Or I embrace into my heart, my angry self, whatever. Then what did I learn? And again, that might be the same, but it's like, what did I learn about myself or about the world around me? <laughs> uh, but probably more about yourself. I learned not to give my power away. Okay. Uh, I learned that getting, when I'm out, when I'm, uh, when I'm busy outside, I sometimes get distracted. That's maybe me coming back into myself. All right. Then the third part of this dark, first dark moon day as you're standing out there with your feet on the ground is what am i letting go of and i suggest you get your glass of water and you put your hands around it and you infuse into that water everything you're going to let go of and then you're going to pour onto the earth that water and say great mother take this energy please transform it and that's going to be your fears your expectations and you may want to call them more than just fears fear of, angry at, <laughs> expectation of. <laughs> you may have written those down and know what those are. And then you're going to root yourself like you did before. Remember, placing your feet on the ground, imagining there's a magnet on the soles of your feet. There's even a larger magnet in Mother Earth and she's pulling you into her. And you, re you release into her, you relax into her. And as I've mentioned before, the more challenges you've been of being on this earth, not wanting to be here, or maybe a mother who didn't necessarily support you, the harder it is for you to let go. But I want you to trust whatever you would trust. Be it, it might even be water. As I say, some of you might be more, more comfortable relaxing into an ocean of water. But I would suggest an earth. So somewhere in nature, somewhere you like going, where you could just relax and develop roots from the soles of your feet into that earth okay now then to allow that soil to surround your roots good and remember this is about nurturing yourself it's not just right i pack the soil around my roots it's more about feeling nurtured held 
as I mentioned, the, the loving hug of a great grandmother. Letting someone support you, nesting into Mother Earth, nesting into this energy. Because we all need that. We need that comfort. We need that support, that, that knowledge that we're not here alone. And if you want, you can bring ancestors into that. You can be great grandmothers or people who even, you know, um, it can also be grandfathers. It doesn't just have to be of the feminine lineage. So who would you nest into? Who did you feel comfortable with? Even if you may not even have met them before, they would, they'd already passed over. Who do you nest into? And maybe you nest into ancient beings. Whatever it is, feel that connection. Good. And that would be what you do on that first day. You go to bed. <laughs> Second day is that day of the new moon, which is the new moon in Gemini. Yay! But this new moon is about connecting. And any new moon is connecting. And connecting, and because it's Gemini, it is about listening, listening with our hearts. Being able to just observe, but observing within rather than getting lost, as I say, in trying to make sense of something. And then the third day, and I'll just say that now, is a day where you will root yourself again in the morning and you'll draw then that energy up from that root chakra we talked about last time, bringing up beautiful new inspiration that aligns to your heart chakra and bringing that up into your body and allowing yourself to, if you want, surround yourself in a golden bubble of this energy. But this is what you're going to be doing for the next month. All right. Are you ready for this meditation that I'm going to work with you? And you might say, I've already been meditating, Chris. Yeah, well, now this is the real one. <laughs> so please, now, if you're in a place, a safe place to do this, please to close your eyes. Take a few good deep breaths. Short breath in, long out breath. Settle into your body, repeating that a few more times. Quietening the mind. It doesn't have to say anything or know anything at this time. And then take your awareness to your heart chakra, center of your chest. And through your heart chakra, see yourself in a beautiful place in nature that you love to go to. And just feel the ground under your feet. Maybe hear birds or animals around you. Just feel the wind. around you. It can be in the evening if you wish, it can be in the day. It's just not about bright sunlight. This is about being in a place that's quiet, just gentle. And the earth is surrounded by an aura, just as we are surrounded by an aura. And each level of that aura is different. Some of it has emotions in it. Some of it has thoughts in it. And we are going to descend to the place of the intuition, the heart. So please, in this wonderful place that I've created for you, please to see an entrance, like a doorway. Now this doorway can be into a cave. It can be into a tree again, whichever you want. But what it is, is a door that opens into an elevator or a lift. So please don't go down with the lift, just open the door. Again, it can be in a tree or in a cave. And as you step into the lift or the elevator, you see that this lift is very magical because it has glass all the way round. So you can see now at the level where you are, wherever you are, we take away the walls of the, of the tree or the walls of the cave. 
but you can literally see the environment in this 3D world outside the walls of your lift or your elevator. I'm going to call it an elevator from now on. This is the physical world. Now you know that you could open that door any time and just step out into that physical world. So there's no barrier, it's just observation. And when you're just in this elevator at that level, the physical level, I want you to realize that through your heart, and through your inner eyes, you can still hear things. It's like as if you have a connection to that world, even though you are slightly separate from it. You may be thinking that you're using your physical eyes to see that world, but increasingly you're understanding, you're seeing the energy of that physical world. You literally are looking at the energy of the hologram of a tree that you might be looking at or the water, you can see the energy of that three-dimensional world. Maybe you can hear sounds. Maybe you feel a connection to whatever you're looking at in this physical world. You're connecting now through your senses, your sixth sense, not your physical senses. Now, we're going to take the elevator down. We're going to take it just down one level. So letting go of that imagery, those feelings, let your elevator go down. And now we're in the astral world. And the astral world is also known as the psychic world. In other words, it's not just emotions, it's also psychic emotions, sensitivities. Many of you have this in spades, you, you feel this very strongly. And here you are, you're feeling, or feeling and seeing the emotional body of the world. And you realize that a lot of that is coming from us as humans. Now it's not only there, you may well see the emotions or the psychic energy of animals of plants, everything that's rooted into this earth, born through this earth, has emotions, has a psychic energy. If you start getting pulled into the emotions of people, I want you just to put a filter in front of the glass of your elevator, a colored filter, blue, green, in other words, I want you to shield yourself a little bit, not because the emotions are bad, but it isn't for you to get attached to them. This is for you to learn detachment, observation, listening, listening with your heart, compassion, but not sending anything or receiving anything, anything, just being. And if it becomes too much, then go back to the animal feelings and the psychic feelings of the trees. This is a time to learn how not to take on other people's energies and how it's not other people's energies. It's more that their energies fire on our energies. It resonates at some level. So using your colored filters you can just recognize that you don't need to do that. And I'm just leaving you here for a moment because I just want you to understand how much you take on, many of us do. And sometimes we need to place almost a mirror in front of us. So instead of putting color around your elevator windows, even send a, put a mirror there so that all the energy goes back to the people who are outside your elevator. It's, at this moment in time, it's not about doing something. We don't want to add to the issue. We acknowledge and we move on. So let's let this elevator go deeper. 
many of you are pleased to say that I'm doing that. Let's go to the next level, which is the mental body level. The mental body level is about thinking, beliefs. And <laughs> probably all of a sudden we've all got very busy there. Lots of, lots of almost wireless frequencies. This is about more information. It's not so much about emotion. Your head might be buzzing, like mine is in this moment. It's just so much noise. So much noise. Now, I, instead of me giving you some color filters, you'll notice in your elevator there's a small switch, like a, a tuning dial or a dial, and you can dial it down, the noise. <laughs> Oh, that's more, that's harmonic. And then you'll recognize that there are certain frequencies of thinking that resonate with you. Again, some which are helpful, some that aren't. But you might hear some statements that are coming through our wavelengths that might be, we're doing it together, uh, be strong, um, be peaceful, whatever it is, it's almost like a mindfulness. What is it that you tell yourself to bring yourself back to your center? And that energy is going out into the world as well as you receiving it. It might be firing you up, like, let's go. It may not be calming you down. Whatever your frequency is, it's not about good or bad, but it is about dialing down what isn't working for you. And you may also hear that there are certain frequencies that are really static. And if you want to do, you can put up a little blocker there. <laughs> no, I'm not receiving that frequency at all. That is not coming into my elevator. Again, filtering different sounds out until it becomes more harmonic. And now we're going to take the elevator down again. We take it down to what we call the soul body. And the soul body is much more peaceful. And you may actually feel it in your heart. Because this is where we connect. We connect with our intuition through our soul body. Each of us has a unique soul, a unique part of the jigsaw, and it's resonating with us. So when we're in the soul body, it's not just that we resonate with ourselves, we resonate with everyone but again it's almost like a resonance and also a uniqueness at the same time it's not about thinking the same way or feeling the same way it's just ah yes i knew it <laughs> do you sense that sense that This is the place that we, that we all want to live in now. This is the place that exists in shape as a dodecahedron, but it's the place of unity consciousness. This is a place almost where there's no duality because it's, it's come together in the oneness. I know you're feeling that. And just for a moment, let's go down to some of the other levels. Take the elevator down. We come to what we call the spiritual body. And the spiritual body is connected to everything that is inspired, everything that has spirit, everything that has life. And again, don't put your mind on this. Can you feel it? Can you hear it with your heart? Can you see it just with your inner eyes? Again, don't try. Okay, and you can come back to this anytime. And then we just drop one more level, we'll just do one more level and we call this universal body, the universal consciousness. Maybe I should call it the multi-universe. This is everything that exists, my friends. 
Can you feel it? I would suggest you stay with feelings rather than seeing or listening. You just feel. You may get images or you may get words, but don't go out looking for them. And as I say, you can come back, you can go deeper. There are more dimensions. I would suggest you just stay with the ones I've been working with until you get comfortable with those. So let's go up, we'll go up to the spirit level, the spirit body. Just feel how it changes from the universal. Where do you feel it? Come up to the soul level, soul body. What changes do you feel in your body? Where do you feel it? Come up now to the mental body. Now you've been to those other levels, has that changed? Do you still need to dial things down? What's changed for you? Come up to the emotional body. Again, do you notice the changes? Maybe you don't need the filters or maybe the colors of the filters change. And now your elevator is coming up to the top level, what we call the 3D world, the physical world, but it's really the etheric, the electromagnetic world that we live in. Just before you step out the elevator, just again, sense into that world. Have things become brighter, different? Are you hearing differently? Now to step out your elevator, please. And as you do, step right back into the place where you're listening to me, watching me. So your feet are on the ground. Take a few good deep breaths so you fill your body again and opening your eyes when you're ready. I so enjoyed doing that meditation. I hope you did too. Every time I do a meditation, I'm guided by where to take us. <laughs> That's rich for me. I'd love to see your comments wherever you want to share them, whether it's on the Facebook, it's on, on Podbeam, or whether on my own site, christinepage.com. But it's just such a pleasure. Please share this. Share this meditation. It is such a great way of centering ourselves in the midst of everything, recognizing that that astral body and that mental body are being overused at the moment. And when you're in those other bodies, everything gets put into a different perspective, doesn't it? So until next time, enjoy this dark moon. Sending love to you all. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Heart Speak Podcast with Dr. Christine Page. Please check out all Heart Speak episodes in the podcast archive section on www.christinepage.com. HeartSpeak is also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, and now playing on iHeartRadio. You can also watch the archive podcasts on YouTube. Connect with Christine on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, including her newest Facebook group, The Great Mother Calling. Do share with family, friends, colleagues, Join us next time for another edition of Heart Speak.